Welcome back. A symphony for strings and drill presses? Not quite, but those are the kinds of sounds you might hear combined at a highly unusual school in London. Mike Attenborough has more. There can be upwards of 10,000 moving parts in a concert grand piano, and students at a unique school in London, Ontario will have the skill to inspect, repair, and maintain every single one of them by the time they graduate. This is not a program for performers, but a unique training ground for a kind of cultural custodian. Students of the School of Piano Technology at the University of Western Ontario have traveled from all over the world to learn the difficult, usually delicate art of piano tuning and restoration. The skills the school teaches are in demand in North America, but the man who hires intern technicians for the prestigious Tanglewood Classical Music Festival, run every summer by the Boston Symphony Orchestra, says the trade has struggled against perceptions. The piano field in general, in the United States at least, has for decades kind of neglected the training of technicians, which is not the case in Europe and Asia. Um, it's never been a highly promoted career. It's never been, frankly, a highly regarded career until recent years. Since 2003, Carver has hired almost half of Tanglewood's interns from the school. It became quickly apparent that the students we were getting from this school were very well grounded in principles, in practicalities, in underlying ideas that made them better technicians, better problem solvers. Few people are happier about that than Anne Fleming Reed. A coordinator and teacher at the school, she helped bring it to London from George Brown College in Toronto six years ago. At Western, the school is housed in an old instrument locker room. Now it's crammed with dismantled grand pianos, parts donated by manufacturers, and traditional and modern tools. The school admits just 14 students a year, who each pay about $13,000 in tuition. Applicants also have to travel to London at their own expense and pass exams for hearing and manual dexterity. Besides Canada, the class of 2006 hails from Cuba, Ireland, the United States, and Australia. Fleming Reed says that students are looking for a challenging vocation that doesn't include the daily grind of a desk job. They're only here for one academic school year. And in that time frame, we have them learn to tune, they learn to repair pianos, they learn to troubleshoot, they learn to change parts. It's incredibly intensive. We expect 60 to 70 hours a week from them. Don Stevenson is Fleming Reed's partner at the school. He says private, part-time programs usually aren't as rigorous and that real on-the-job training has become rare. There are very few ways that people have the ability or can find an environment suitable for learning anymore. Uh, those environments aren't really there. And if they are there by certain individuals or company, they're quite often more for that company or individual's own commercial benefit. Jennifer Roberts used to teach high school music in Australia. She didn't like being in front of a class, but couldn't get the training she needed to become a piano tech. I'd rung up a lot of tuners and technicians around Sydney, where I was at the time, and uh, pretty much all of them were very reluctant to take on a technician or an apprentice, um, just because of the fact that the, the time it would take to train somebody would be a lot, or it, it would take a very long time. Chris Rawson, a student from Vermont who's already had some tuning experience says he chose this school over larger and better known U.S. programs. I considered uh, the North Bennett Street School in Boston. I considered uh, the Crab School of Piano Technology in Atlanta, Georgia. The instructors here and the teaching was more progressive. He means that there's more to the school than manual labor. Students must also study the physics of sound and music history. It has numerous cracks that have occurred by shrinking and drying over the years. And In the workshop, history and, uh, comes from more than just books. This is an 1878 Steinway Stevenson will use to teach students the ins and outs of large-scale restoration. These are the base, this is the base bridge, this is the treble bridge. When they graduate, students will be qualified for technician jobs at concert venues and manufacturers but Stevenson says that most students' ambitions lie elsewhere. There's still a, a great desire for many students to want to become self-employed. They want to create and carve out their own destiny and, and control it as much as possible. 
27-year-old Daryl Fabiani worked 12-hour days at the piano moving and tuning business he opened when he graduated in 2001. He works out of his London home and says plenty of doors have opened because of his training. The former linebacker for the Western Mustangs also practiced with the Toronto Argonauts. Fabiani says it's not a stretch to compare his gridiron training to the rigors of the piano tech program. Just doing football and, and being pretty competitive my whole life, I have probably a higher threshold of pain, so, so I could, uh, I felt I could, you know, handle the pressure, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing to do to tune a piano and, and to tune it well. He and another tech found this piano in Ohio and planned to refurbish it. He talks about swapping out different parts the way an auto mechanic would discuss rebuilding an old beater. We're going to be you know, changing the tuning pins, replacing all the hammers, replacing all the dampers, um, basically changing every kind of felt you can within the action, um, polishing up the keys, and also we're going to re refinish, um, well, correct if there's any problems with the soundboard as far as cracks. A piano technician commands the same premium rates as a mechanic or electrician. Fabiani didn't grow up dreaming of becoming a piano technician, but says that he's found a financially and personally rewarding career. You're a special trade, and uh, you, you know you're definitely charging accordingly, you know, to your market. So it's it's a good living, but um, you know you got to work at it. And work he does at a going rate of eighty-five dollars an hour. He was booked for four weeks solid this spring, and he's now a concert technician who has counted BB King and Chantal Kraviasek among his clients. James and Magnuson has performed all over the world as half of the piano-based group, the Piano Duo. He says a good technician makes his job effortless. He remembers the problems he had with two pianos in Seoul. It sounded like a banjo. So we had that, that concert also stood out in my mind because there was nothing we could do. We had really a very dull piano and a very bright piano, so it was, it was very frustrating. And Agnesen says that a piano technician can help stimulate a performer and that his job is most gratifying when he's striving against himself and not wrestling with a tuneless piano. You have to deal with the sound. You're always, we're always dealing with sound. So if that sound doesn't inspire us, you're having to bring the inspiration to it. So you're having to work at it. And the best concerts are where you just sit back and you put your hands up and it's like, oh, love that sound. So the job of a piano tech isn't so off-key after all. Applications at the school are up every year, and students say that even though they are looking forward to good industry jobs or running their own business, it rarely feels like work. But most importantly for them, it immerses them in a world they love and allows them to live life at their own tempo. For 30 Minutes, this is Mike Attenborough.